In this video, we're going to start with the mass of different elements in a compound, and we're going to convert from mass to the empirical formula of that compound. Whenever we go from the mass of the elements to the empirical formula, we're going to do that in kind of three steps here. First, we're going to convert moles. We'll be given grams of each of the elements, convert those to moles. Then we'll find the lowest molar ratio. In other words, how many hydrogens do I have per carbon? And then we'll write the empirical formula for that compound. When we say empirical formula, we're talking about the formula that's in the lowest molar ratio. So let's say the compound was C2H6. Using this method, we would be able to determine that, but we would be able to determine the lowest molar ratio, which would be CH3. So the problem says a student is trying to determine the empirical formula of a sample of a hydrocarbon, meaning it just has hydrogen and carbon, that contains 29.8 grams of carbon and 10 grams of hydrogen. So we're gonna do two separate calculations to convert from grams to moles. So we'll start with carbon here, 29.8 grams of carbon. And I'm gonna set up my T chart here and I have to have 12.01 grams of carbon in the denominator. So the grams of carbon, we'll divide out with grams of carbon. And I'm left with 2.481 moles of carbon. So I converted from grams of carbon to moles of carbon. I'm gonna do the same thing for hydrogen, 10 grams of hydrogen, set up my T chart. 1.008 grams of hydrogen is on the bottom per one mole, and I get 9.92 moles of hydrogen. If you need to review how to convert from grams to moles, I've got a video on that. Check that out if you need it. Okay, great. So we have the moles of carbon present and the moles of hydrogen present. The next thing we need to do is find the ratio of these elements. So what I'm gonna do is take the element that has the fewest number of moles and divide that into each of the other numbers. If I had three elements present in this compound, I would divide the lowest into each of them to figure out my ratios. In this case, I just have two, so I'm gonna divide 2.481 into 9.92. So 9.92 divided by 2.481, and I get 4.0002, or basically I get four. And what that means is that I have four hydrogens for every carbon, four hydrogens, for every carbon, or four hydrogens for every one carbon. So I have one carbon and four hydrogens. I can write my empirical formula from that. If there were a third element present, I would take that 2.481 moles and divide that into the number of moles of whatever that third element was. And then I would add that third element to my empirical formula here. Now what if instead of getting right at four, we got something like 4.5, something that we can't just like round to four or round to five? In other words, what if the lowest molar ratio is a decimal? Let's say that we did a problem that was pretty much the same, but whenever we calculated our moles of carbon and hydrogen, we got this. 2.481 moles of carbon still, but we had 6.203 moles of hydrogen. So far, so good. I would take the 2.481, divide it into the 6.203, but in this case, I get 2.5. Do you see the problem? I would get CH 2.5 but I can't have two and a half hydrogens. I can't have half of an atom. But again, that 2.5 is just a ratio. So what I can do is I can multiply the number of carbons by two and the number of hydrogens by two. And if I do that, I'm gonna have C2H5, which I can have because now I don't have a half of an atom in my empirical formula. So if you get a decimal, you're gonna have to multiply everything by a certain number. Let's take a look at some of the possibilities that you could have. If something ends in 0.5, you're always gonna multiply it by two to get a whole number. If your ratio ends in 0.33, you'll multiply by three, which will give you a whole number. If it ends in 0.25, multiply by four. If it ends in 0.2, multiply by five. And if it ends in something else, you'll just have to figure out what can you multiply it by to get a whole number. But those would be the four most common ones that you might encounter whenever converting from grams of elements in a compound to the empirical formula. Again, take the grams of each element, convert to moles, then find the lowest molar ratio by dividing the fewest number of moles into the other numbers of moles that you got for each element. And then from there, write your empirical formula.